Hello team, welcome. It's Digital DJ Tips live on Facebook and YouTube for our Tuesday Tips Live this Tuesday. Wherever you are in the world, it's great to have you here. If you're one of our existing viewers, one of our existing subscribers, uh, it's so good to have you back. Thank you very much for being here uh, and you're going to have lots of fun in the next 40 minutes as we look at the big question. Is live streaming as in streaming music live into your dj equipment and then instead of instead of owning your own local music library just plugging in spotify plugging in tidal plugging in soundcloud is using streaming music in djing the new sync so in other words is it the new thing that's dividing djs the world over uh, and, or is it just like a no-brainer and we're all going to love it so there's lots and lots to talk about the reason we're talking about this particular topic today is that it's just arrived in serato we've got soundcloud in serato the beta uh, is available now it was uh, went public yesterday so you've got soundcloud and you've got uh, tidal which is a big streaming service uh, both of which you can uh, i think you can use them both on a free trial in, Sa in serato so if you're a serato user you don't have to pay anything to try this out let's get in there and have a look uh, so that's why we're talking about it now and whenever we talk about this it divides people right down the middle which is why we're calling it the new sync a little bit uh, craftily maybe a little bit mischievously is it the new sync is it the thing that's currently dividing djs so that's what we're going to talk about today by the way if you are new to the channel i'm phil from digital dj tips this is the digital dj tips channel we are the world's biggest online dj school and we are here to help you become a better dj or better dj producer that is our job so watch along for free we have many many dj courses that you can take this further with but this is all free we do this every week to help so do enjoy uh, i'm now just going to go as I always do to our page and make sure that we are in fact live because I never trust this stuff I can't even program a video recorder I bet some of you can't even remember video recorders right so I've always got to just check that we are actually live like we're meant to be uh, but it does look indeed like we might be so that's cool hello to Dominique from Belgium who is proof that we're live because otherwise how could he have uh, asked for a shout uh, so if you are um, someone who is not a subscriber and you're watching this on the replay then hit that subscribe button because that will allow you to know when we go live. Hit the bell as well if you're on YouTube, which again will allow us to notify you when these things happen. Uh, and uh, then we can all follow along together live, which is of course what this is all about. You can watch all my mistakes and all our mess ups uh, as well as getting the information. Right, so back to what we're talking about. We are talking about whether streaming music in your DJ software is actually the new sync button. So I'm going to look at the three big things that DJs say that they really don't like about this idea of streaming music in your DJ software. We're going to look at them one by one now uh, and then we're going to look at how true they are, how much truth there is in what people say about this when they are saying it's just like that sync button. It's and then they insert something about it there. Before we do though, just a few early hellos. Hi to Lester, hi to Jean-Paul, hi to Dag in Germany. Always good to have you here, Dag. Hi to Broomy, Broomy Broom. Hi, nice to have you, one of our top fans there. Um, hi to Paul, nice to have you here, Paul. Um, I've always been one of your top fans, my, my friend. Uh, that's Paul DeCane, uh, awesome producer, awesome remixer, and number one hit single man in the UK. If you can name Paul DeCane's number one hit single and the name of the act, I will read it out and I will read your name out for Paul. Um, okay, hi to Nicholas in Morocco, to Carlos in New York City. I was there recently, Carlos. Hi to DJ M. Makoko, uh, who says, awesome. Uh, and hi to Scott. Right, lots and lots of you piling in now. Hi to Nev. Uh, so everyone in the place, let's go. We're talking about how streaming in your DJ equipment might just be the new sync button. It might just be the big thing that's dividing people. Now, in order to get ourselves in the mood for this, I had Serato running on here through DVS with some Serato vinyl on my old Dex and turntable. This really is my old Dex and turntable. Let's take a little zoom in and let me show you this mixer. This mixer is a Pioneer Club mixer. Uh, this, if I can just try and get that to zoom in, it might do, it might not, it might play ball. Uh, but we'll find out. Uh, it's a Pioneer Club mixer anyway. You can probably just about see it on the main picture anyway. Uh, and this mixer here, uh, sorry, it's a Technics Club, Club mixer. And this is um, from like 25 years ago. It is the official World DJ Championship mixer, which you can't see because I can't get the shot to show. But hey, it's an official DJ World Championship mixer. Uh, and the reason I set this up is just to then get Serato running and get SoundCloud plugged in and see what it felt like DJing with DVS just with vinyl like I've done all my life and an old mixer 
but with music coming straight off the internet that I didn't actually own. And I'll tell you what, it feels freaky. It does feel really strange. Uh, and not in a bad way, it's just like weird. You drop the needle on the record and you're like, but this isn't even, this music, I don't even own it. It's not even on my computer. It's like, it's come off the internet. It's a really weird feeling. So um, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the reasons why people are resistant to this incoming, and there will be lots more by the way. We've already got SoundCloud. We've already got Tidal in Serato. You've already got um, uh, Spotify in DJ Pro, DJ AY Pro that runs on your iPad. Uh, and there are all other types coming. Just trust me on that. They are. So we, we will see at some point Spotify elsewhere. We'll see Apple Music elsewhere. It just stands to reason, doesn't it? It's going to happen. So, you know, this stuff is coming. So here's a few of the things that people say. By the way, if you know someone who's going to get really wound up by this, or if you totally agree with what I'm saying, or you totally disagree with it, hit the share button. Let's get this debate going. Let's get it far and wide. There's lots of differing views on this. I want to present our view here today, but also the other, other arguments. So number one, people say it makes it too easy for new DJs. Having the world's music, and by the way, Beatport are about to come out with a service as well that does this. Imagine your whole Beatport catalog on your laptop straight into your DJ software. Everything you can buy on Beatport, there it is. DJ with it, get on with it. People say it's making it too easy for new DJs. In my day, I had to go down and sit on the record shop counter at 7.45 in the morning while they unboxed the 12-inch vinyl singles and battle with the other DJs to get my, my hands on the track I wanted. I used to pay £20, $30 for an import treble pack, Strictly Rhythm, 12 inch, in order to get the three minutes of music on the B side of side E. Uh, you know, now you just get online, it's all there. It's not what DJing is about. DJing is about fighting for your music. It's about really deep music discovery. It's about getting off your ass and getting down that record shop. It's about all kinds of things which aren't buying a nine pound or nine dollar monthly subscription to Tidal or Spotify, pressing a button and having the whole world's music in your DJ library to DJ with. That's not what it's about. It's cheating. New DJs are doing it all wrong. Streaming is part of the end of DJing. So that is what people say. That is one argument against streaming, that it's too easy. So this is what we think about that. This is very similar to the sync button argument, right? Because people said, oh, you know what? The sync button is making DJing too easy. We need to line up our tunes in our headphones and we need to, uh, we need to very carefully move our tempo faders and we need to make sure they're together. And when they're together, we need to check they'll stay together. And you know, that's what DJing is about. DJing is about the physical skill of doing this stuff. It's not about hitting one button and it's all done for you. That's cheating. Right, that was uh, an argument on the sync button. Now the sync button since then has appeared on all kinds of DJ gear and I think the beginning of the end for the argument that I just gave you was the fact that nowadays the sync button is, and I'm proud to say I don't know exactly where it is because I don't use it, it's here, it's here. Uh, by the way, the fact that I don't use it doesn't say anything. I would use it if, uh, if I wanted to. I'm completely down with it. Um, it's on Pioneer gear, it's on Denon gear, it's in the DJ booth now. The sync button is on hardware everywhere. It's happened. It's there. Press it. If you don't press it, you're just going to be messing around with pitch faders for a few minutes. You know, um, most people use that sync button now, including pro DJs. So, but a few years ago, when it was new, a lot of people were like, "No, that's terrible." So, um, it makes it too easy for new DJs having all the world's music at your fingertips. Is one of the arguments against sync. Now, the second argument that people use, and by the way, if you've just joined us, we're talking about. It, sorry, against um, streaming. We're talking about is streaming, is using streaming services like Spotify, um, SoundCloud and so on, is it the new sync button? Is it the new thing that's dividing DJs and that's going to have people battling, battling it out on Reddit and in chat rooms for the next couple of years or not? Uh, so we've already covered it makes it too easy for new DJs. This is the arguments against it. It makes it too easy for new DJs. The second thing we want to cover is um, this argument that it's not going to be reliable. Streaming is not going to be reliable in your DJ software when you want to play music to a crowd. So I want to deal with this one now and, and break a couple of myths about this, but also um, show where this might well have some, um, you know, some substance as an argument. So when we're talking about streaming from SoundCloud, from Tidal, from Spotify in our DJ software, people say, well, look, I can't do it where I DJ. It's in a club in the basement. My 
my Wi-Fi is terrible down there and I'm not going to burn through my 4G. Um, you know, it's a non-starter for me. Or I DJ to thousands of people. Why on earth would I rely on a, an internet connection? You know, I need to own my own music. You know, these arguments are good, right? But what people don't understand is that streaming never really means live streaming. It never really means taking a track off the internet straight onto your... I mean, I'm using Record X here because it was fun to mess around with Serato's DVS, but it never really means that you haven't got a local copy of the tune. So the very, very least that's going to happen is, you know when you drag a track onto your software and you see the waveform fill up and then at the end the waveform's all there? That's it. The track is now on your software. If you unplug the internet, that will carry on playing. Play as often as you like, backwards, forwards, cue points, do whatever you want with it. It's there. It's on your software. While you're playing that track, there ain't no problem. You try and load a track on the other deck from the streaming service and there will be a problem because you've just unplugged the internet, right? That's the way it works in Serato right now. However, the way it will work in the future and the way it has worked before, if any of you remember Pulse Locker, Pulse Locker was a precursor in Serato that, uh, that went bump, unfortunately, a company that just went out of business. But they had a similar kind of service. In Pulse Locker's implementation of streaming, you organise all your music online, so in the equivalent of Spotify or whatever, you organise your playlist, and you click on your computer, make it available offline. Now, I'm sure if you use Spotify on your phone or whatever, you know, because you've seen this before, right? You can do this. You can, even Netflix, you can watch your films on the plane, or you can download all your music to listen to on the way to work without burning through your data. So this is not new, but it is um, going to be coming in DJ software. As I say, for some strange reason, Serato has not implemented it on SoundCloud and Tidal in, in Serato 2.1, but I think it's coming. Because um, it used to be there before in the last service they used. And the, the Beatport service that's coming is based on Pulse Locker, the one that went bump. So I imagine that the Beatport, when they plug theirs into software, will have the same thing. So basically, you spend all your time on the cloud, looking at music, discovering awesome new stuff, making playlists, and when you're ready to go DJing, you click Make Available Offline. Now you can unplug your computer from the internet, plug your laptop straight into the DJ gear, uh, and it will be utterly reliable, just as reliable as playing with your own local music files. So the argument that it's not reliable in that sense is because people don't really understand how it works uh, and what it, you know, what's built in to, to make sure the music keeps playing, at least the track you're currently playing, but eventually all your playlists from your streaming service when there's no internet. Now, before we move on to number three, I want to, I know, I know loads of you have got lots and lots to say about this. So, um, so um, uh, Jay says, good point, Phil. I think having tracks available offline is going to be key and will squash a lot of negativity. I think you're dead right there, Jay. Hello, by the way. Um, um, I missed the intro, says Ken. Well, are we covering how to stream in Serato? No, we're covering streaming. Is streaming the new sync button, Ken? That's what we're covering. Is it the new thing that's going to divide people? We're busting a few myths about it. I'm giving you our Digital DJ Tips view on this. Um, Jay says it's going to be a massive game changer for mobile DJs. In fact, that's something we're going to talk about in a minute, Jay. Uh, Filthy Richardson says, uh, hi, Phil. Good to have you here. Um, how, is making, how is having more music going to make someone a better DJ, says Christopher? Does that mean that all I need to be the best DJ is to buy more music than any other DJ? It's a ridiculous argument. Um, so I think, what, I think it's the opposite, actually, that, um, that uh, old school DJs are saying, and that certainly that we see in the comments. What they're saying is that because you don't have to go looking for your music, nowadays, because you can get it, the whole world's music on Tidal or 10 million tracks or whatever, it somehow makes you less of a DJ. You're not learning the crate digging, the discovery side of DJing. Uh, so that's the argument. We're going to talk about how that might or might not be true in a bit, but I think that's more the argument. But also, having all the world's music will never make you a better DJ. Um, we, we, we argue strongly at Digital DJ Tips that you need a way of only choosing the tracks you like and only having them on your radar, never mind in your collection. Uh, you know, the whole point of a DJ is to filter the world's music. Imagine you've got all the world's music here. This is, like, we call this the playlist pyramid. You've got all the world's music here and it filters all the way up through the stuff you've heard, the stuff you've shortlisted, Shazam, the stuff you've, short, you've bought, the stuff you've got in your collection, and then finally the stuff at the top that you put into your set to play that particular event, right? This filter, this job, Playlist pyramid filtering, that's what we do as DJs. So dialing into 10 million tracks, turning up to DJ and just saying, hey, look, I've got 10 million tracks, aren't I a good DJ? Completely crazy. You have to have done the preparation work beforehand, right? So again, we're going to talk about this in a minute. Um, but the reliability thing, uh, 
I think once you've got this this general ability to have it offline, which is you know think of it as, as locally cached music from your streaming service, uh, it's gonna you know as Jay says, it's gonna blow that one away. Um, so hi to Charles, DJ Joey Santos, good to have you here, mate. It says I've used Spotify and DJ Pro at a beach gig and festival and had absolutely no problems. So there we go. Uh, hi to Juan Me. Um, it's definitely a good thing as far as physically carrying is concerned. Better for the old back, uh, says. Uh, Carlos, well, in fact, that's us replying to Carlos. Um, so, um, um, yeah, Carlos is saying it's a change to carrying uh, lots of records, eh? Um, so, um, uh, so okay, lots and lots of comments coming in. Uh, Broomy Broom says, I used to love record hunting a white label gem and chatting to people and interacting with people. Yeah, you know, no one's pretending that it hasn't changed fundamentally the way we get music. But I remember spending an awful lot of money and spending an awful, awful lot of time in record shops as well uh, and still not getting what I wanted half the time you know the disappointment as I went home on the number 86 bus from Manchester city centre with nothing because I went around every shop I couldn't find anything I liked I'd much rather have spent that four hours online listening through music and playlisting it in Spotify sorry but I would it's, I find it so much better um, uh, okay so um, let's move on our third issue that people have with streaming by the way is Spotify Tidal, um, SoundCloud in your DJ software so you can play as we've been doing here today um, with Serato so you can just play straight from the internet. Is that the new sync button? Is it the new thing that's dividing DJs? Is it going to cause a right big argument in DJing over the next couple of years as it becomes more mainstream? And that's what we're talking about today. So the third thing that people say is your music may go away. So in other words, a lot of people were paying £10, $10 a month to a company called Pulse Locker until last year. Um, and then Pulse Locker went bump, all your playlists, all the work you'd done was gone from their service. Um, they were plugged into Serato before the current batch of streaming services. It's a good argument, but it goes further than that as well. What a lot of people don't realise about Spotify, Apple Music, SoundCloud, Tidal is that they don't own, they don't buy a copy of all the tracks they've got on their service so that you can stream them. No, they license those records. So if they're licensing the, the right to have them on their service, these licenses are constantly being renegotiated and the artists get involved and everyone else who's got a stake in it gets involved. What this actually means in practice is your music might disappear from that streaming service at any time. Not all of it, but the odd track. And if you don't believe me, go back to any Spotify, Apple Music playlist you made this time last year and look at how many tracks you can still play. I almost guarantee that at least uh, one or two of them will be greyed out and you won't be able to play them. Now, that is a definite argument against relying 100% on streaming services for your music as a DJ because I can guarantee you, if you build a 1,000 tunes in the next... Um, 12 months that you're, you're playing in Tidal, for instance, on Serato, then uh, this time next year, only 990 of them will be there, you know, as a, a guess. In other words, it doesn't matter if one or 100 go, they're still not there when you want them there, right? So this is, at the moment, a argument against going hook, line and sinker into just using streaming music. So that is the third argument, your music might go away. And there is definitely some truth in that, the way things stand right now. But I want to just throw you back to the beginning of things like email, when everyone was like, that's never going to catch on. You know, I'm not putting, I'm not sending important documents on a computer. I'm not, you know, an early email service did disappear. They went bump. People were keeping emails locally and downloading them and taking them off the main server and stuff. You know, email was unreliable. It had problems. It had um, all kinds of stuff that went on at the, in the early days. Now everything's done by email, right? I can scan my passport and send it to a bank and open an account by email. Everything's done by email now. We rely on it. The systems have got more robust. The, if you like, the equivalent of the licensing in the background is now solid. That is going to happen with streaming music. There's absolutely no doubt. As the whole world moves from having digital music files, well, first physical files, records and CDs, then digital music files, as the whole world moves towards being connected and having all their music um, available virtually and not as an actual copy on their computer, apart from when they've cached it for their DJ software, of course. As the whole world moves that way, this is just going to be one of the kinks that gets ironed out, is, is our view on this. So yes, there is a valid argument there. Right, we're talking about is 
streaming music in your DJ software, Spotify, Tidal, uh, and, uh, and um, SoundCloud and all those services, Beatport have got one coming. Uh, is this the new think button? Is this the new big argument in DJing that's gonna divide people down the middle? We've already covered, it makes it too easy for new DJs, so people say, uh, because they've just got all the world's music there, it's too easy. Um, it's not reliable because you're relying on the internet. We've covered off why that's actually not the case. Uh, and it, your music might go away, your music might vanish from the service, and I've just talked about that one. There is some truth in that right now, but we're betting that it's going to mature quite quickly to the point where it stops being an issue. What I do want to talk to you about is what we advise DJs, because DJs ask us all the time, should I start using these services? You know, we use them, as you just heard, Joey Santos, one of our DJs, did a whole party uh, on the beach recently using Spotify plugged into his iPad, said it worked awesome. Uh, so, you know, this is, is, is happening around you right now. And I want to talk to you about a few things that um, are actually happening out there. So what is happening is DJs are using what we call hybrid DJing. So they're using these services alongside their local music collection. And this is what I believe is the best way to do it. So you just continue to collect music like normal, but you have a streaming service in your software. And maybe you collect playlists for the warm up and you just DJ your warm up stuff from some warm up tracks you found that you've got on your streaming service. Or you're a mobile DJ, wedding DJ, corporate DJ, event DJ, and you use it for requests, stuff you wouldn't want to buy yourself anyway. Especially if you're asked to play ethnic parties and stuff where there's music you really aren't likely to play again anytime soon. Just use these services. If you want to experiment with a new genre or a new style, use these services. If you want to DJ at home in a new genre or a new style, even better. Just download everything from the record labels you like and the artists you like uh, into a playlist uh, and play it from your streaming service. By download, I mean add it to a playlist. Uh, and you know, you don't have any commitment there financially. The stuff you like, go and buy it. Get onto Beatport and buy it, add it to your collection. Treat streaming as the best music discovery or the biggest record shop in the world where you get a chance to actually mix the tunes before you buy them. I mean, that's pretty cool, right? This is where it's gonna creep in to the way DJs work. Uh, I've got more stuff to share with you, but loads and loads of you are commenting here, so I do want to cover uh, what you're saying. Um, to be a better DJ, you need to be creative now because everyone has the same music. It's how you lay it down that counts, says Ken. Yeah, which is also what people said about the sync button, isn't it? You know, if sync can line your beats up, what are you gonna do with it now? How are you going to stand out from everyone else who's lined their beats up with sync? Turns out that DJing is not about that button, it's about everything else you do. Um, so lovely point there, um, lovely point there, Ken. Ron says, I use an iPad with mixing software and a Bluetooth connection to my PA. It works well and I can walk around the venue taking requests when the time is right. It's also good for sound checks. Classic mobile DJ use right there from Ron. Um, so... Um, Aaron says, I have a premium account with Spotify and I pay to listen to their music. I'm not sure how this clarifies public performance. Actually, this is a really good point. Let's talk for a second about the legality of this. So inside Serato, they've got SoundCloud and Tidal. Apparently, this is all legal for playing live. Obviously, it depends upon what country you're in and so on. Generally, the rule of thumb is the venue you're playing in has a public performance license for music. And that means you can play music anywhere you damn well want in that venue. You're covered. You know, that makes sense, doesn't it? Because these, these licenses grew out of the live band scene, right? So you imagine a live band playing there and they play a cover version of someone else's tune. They don't have to pay. If, my, if me and my mates get on stage and play a U2 track, we don't have to pay a royalty to U2. It's covered on the license for the premises. That's the basic rule of thumb that covers DJing as well and all this kind of thing. But there are gray areas, some of them are quite big. For instance, Spotify plugged into Algorithm's DJ app does not, if you look in the small print, have a public performance element to it. So it's technically illegal to use Spotify even though it's plugged into a DJ app in their app. But if you look at Beatport's terms and conditions, and I'm telling you the absolute truth here, go and have a look afterwards, tucked away down there in your terms and conditions when you buy music from Beatport, you're not allowed to play those tunes in public. Go figure, right? So there's the theory and the practice in all of these things. That's a great question though about the legality. Um, Pontus says, doesn't having more music make it harder to select? Good DJ will always be about good song selection and good flow, no matter what gear or crate you're using. I could not agree with you more, Pontus. I think you've hit the nail on the head there. One thing that worries me about this is that the, the whole DJ's thought process of listening to music day in day out shazamming the stuff that he or she likes on a on a saturday listening through all your shazams and going and spending some time in the record stores um you know getting your list of things you want to download looking through them chucking half of them away finally buying the ones that you really want adding them to your collection 
go using them in your practice sessions and then when it comes to time to play a gig dragging those tracks from your main collection into a playlist just for that gig then turning up at the gig and then only playing half the tracks that you've done all that work with that process of filtering the music is going to be disrupted because just at the very last minute when you're playing suddenly you've got 10 million tunes to pick from so i think we need to develop methods of being systematic about how we do this it's a great point pontus you know it maybe there's going to be um, we're, in, we're incorporating this into our training right now, by the way, how we will we'll recommend people use this kind of thing. Uh, but, you know, it does need thinking about uh, because you certainly don't want to be logging onto Spotify and, and, and typing in, you know, dance music, enter, and then playing from what comes up. It's ridiculous. You're right. You're totally right there, Pontus. Um, so, um, so, okay, what else have we got to cover here? Um, my team seems to be doing a really, really good job of answering you all anyway. So if I don't answer you, the team will. Ronnie says the hybrid idea is closely related to being prepared for any eventuality. What if the tracks you thought might be appropriate are totally wrong? Dedicated folders or crates or playlists to jump to just in case. This is going off onto another subject, which is how to make sure you've got a plan B and a plan C in your DJ. It doesn't matter if it's local music or from the cloud. Uh, but uh, yes, you're right. You have to be prepared. You have to know what you're going to do if what you try first time doesn't work. And maybe if what you try second time doesn't work as well. Um, so, OK, um, we're talking about how this might pan out uh, in DJing. By the way, if you have just joined us, you, are, you missed so much good stuff. You can watch from the beginning when you're finished. Uh, but uh, hey, look. Uh, subscribe and then you won't miss this stuff in the future. I'm just going to check the time because I've got a meeting in half an hour and this is, I always go on, I always enjoy this too much, I always enjoy your comments too much, uh, but I do have to uh, shoot off at some point soon. Right, look, um, what I think is going to happen next, what I think, these are two things I want you to look out for if you're thinking, hmm, is streaming going to take off or not? These are the two things I think you want to look out for. Number one, cloud lockers. So a cloud locker is where you have a Place and it already exists, you know. Dropbox is, is a classic example of this. But cloud lockers being available in a more user friendly way for DJs. So, in other words, the idea that you're going to store all your music online, but just in a private place that, that you own, it's like your hard drive, but online. And that means that, you know, if your computer gets smashed up, you get a new computer, you log in again, all your music's there again. Now, you already probably have guessed where this is going. You don't have to download all that music back to your computer to DJ with it. Your computer could just download the playlist you want or the track you want just before you're about to play it. Looks pretty similar to what we've been talking about here, doesn't it? And I think that's the way it's going. I think we'll be increasingly storing more of our stuff online. I already store my music online. I already keep all my music in uh, Dropbox, for instance, um, and it's just kept locally as well. I just sync it locally. But in the future, as the internet gets faster and faster, will I bother? Will anyone bother? I'm not so sure. So we might just end up by default keeping all our music in the cloud. So when you buy something from Beatport or whatever, it never actually comes to your computer. It just goes from Beatport's server to your p personal server, right? So that's the first thing I want you to think about. The second thing I want you to think about when it comes to streaming music and how quickly it's going to be adopted is hardware manufacturers building it in, right? So, you know, there's a, imagine one of these, other media players are available. Imagine one of these where when you log in, instead of putting a USB drive in here, you put your username and password in and you click enter, suddenly all your music is there. Probably from your cloud locker, that's going to happen. There is going to be the ability for anyone to turn up to a, um, a gig with nothing apart from their headphones. Always take your own headphones, right? No music. You might have a, a, a spare USB in your back pocket, but you can just log into your account on a cloud service or on your particular mix of cloud services or whatever it is that you, you know that, that will end up dominating this, this part of the market. And you turn up with a username and password, and that's it. You log into your own music. Now, I think that sounds pretty cool to you. I think that sounds pretty good and I'm pretty sure it's coming. What I can tell you is that I know hardware manufacturers are thinking very seriously about including this stuff in their hardware and why wouldn't they? Several of them have said um, to me personally, look, we're thinking about this uh, and in fact, I can't think of any of the big ones who haven't told me that personally. And it makes sense because these services are out there and they're plugged into pretty much everything else. You can buy Spotify Bluetooth speakers nowadays. Sonos, it works, you know, Sonos doesn't have any music locally. It's all done through streaming services. You know, stick a crossfader and a couple of uh, platters on there. You've now got DJ gear that works with streaming services. So imagine DJ gear that you don't have to worry about taking your laptop because it's all built in or your music with you. I think that sounds pretty cool. Now I can hear the, you know, 
streaming is the new sync button people already spitting their dummies out choking on their teeth saying that sounds terrible everyone will, everyone will be able to dj but do you know what we say at digital dj tips that's great we're really happy that everyone will be able to dj music consumption nowadays is about putting tracks on decks and messing around with them why should you stand back and not have fun with it and from that new way of thinking about djing that we've been championing all these years we'll get a whole new breed of djs doing a whole whole new load of stuff uh, and it's just going to get more and more exciting but this idea that you just put music on and sit back and listen to it is dead as far as we're concerned and the more interaction everyone on, on this planet can have with the music they're playing the better and we think streaming stuff getting built into dj gear is absolutely paramount and by the way the third thing i want to share with you is apple music when apple music finally gets baked into streaming um, to dj gear i think that's going to be a game changer and the reason is that every single piece of dj software has got itunes in it right every single piece of dj software you can access your itunes all you can't do at the moment is access the tracks that aren't owned. It won't show you the tracks you've got in your iTunes from Apple Music. But they're there in the iTunes app. And as soon as DJ software shows them, people will start dragging stuff onto their decks inside Serato and Tractor and Virtual DJ, etc. Um, and not even know it's from their streaming service. It'll just be arriving in the background. And I think that is going to be a massive tipping point here as well. So I've covered everything I wanted to talk about here. We've been talking about is streaming the new sync button? Is it the new big divider in DJing? A uh, little bit of a cheeky title there, but uh, there's a lot of things in parallel with the way people are talking about streaming now to the way people talked about it in the past. Uh, I just want to uh, read out a few more comments. Um, a, few, a lot of you saying DJ Max Saint is saying something here, which uh, a lot of you have said, yes, offline caching would be sweet. That would be the way forward. Um, um, and uh, people are pointing out that Spotify already you can download and keep your stuff offline. Exactly. It's just a case of getting all that plugged into DJ stuff. Um, and a few people are saying, yeah, but it's not foolproof. But then my team is pointing out nothing's foolproof, including turntables and CDJs. How many people have had the needle skid off a turntable because it's got dusty or whatever? Um, I think a bit of danger in DJing is a good thing, personally. Um, anyway, loads more comments. My team will get back to you on the ones I haven't been able to cover here. If you found this useful, um, please subscribe to the site, djtips.co slash join. And remember, it's Black Friday, it's Thanksgiving, and as of tomorrow, we have got our biggest sale of the year. Every available DJ course in our uh, range is going to be at least 30% off for a few days. So if you are not a member, djtips.co slash join and then you can use those advantages. We'll email you tomorrow and let you know when that goes live. That's all I've got for you today. Get good, get out there, make the moments and we'll see you again very soon here on Digital DJ Tips YouTube and Facebook. Till next time.